Hey everyone, welcome back to Watch and Carry. So in this video, we're going to talk about the uh, float, um, the float one uh, protective plate that goes underneath the one wheel. So I have the one wheel pint turned upside down right now. And uh, this plate is basically going to provide some protection to not only the front and the back, but also the bottom of these rails right here. So this is the package that I got in the mail. And I ordered this directly from Float's website. I think I ordered this last week on a Tuesday and I ended up getting it on a Friday. So it was relatively quick shipping. All right, so when you open it up, this is what you're gonna be getting. So let's take a look here. Okay, so first of all, you get this little bag here. Looks like there's some goodies in here. So we have the business card for Float Life, where to follow them on social media. Some Float Life stickers. Those will go well with the uh, pint stickers I got earlier today. You get a Torx wrench, and I'm pretty sure this is a T20, which is gonna be used for, I think, six of these fasteners later on. And then because, of course, you're adding a protective plate, it's going to make it a little bit thicker. So you need a little bit longer of a fastener, which they provide to you. So in this case, we have about one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. So you get five long fasteners and three small fasteners. So taking a look at the holes here on the plate itself. We have two here, four, and then six. So we're really only going to be using six of these, but we have eight. So it looks like they gave you one extra small and one extra long just in case they break or you lose them. So that's kind of nice. And then the last thing here in the bag is, <laughs> oh, that's pretty funny. So you get, um, that's pretty awesome actually. Unbleached hemp papers. Looks like there's about 33 leaves in here. So that's pretty cool. And I do live in Vegas, so it is the right state to have these. Awesome. So that's that's pretty great. So here's the float plate. I chose to have mine in blue. You can choose different colors for yours. And I bought this for several reasons. Number one, I wanted protection for the bottom of the board. I didn't opt to get a fender yet. For me, it was all about protecting what I already have. So I know that just like any other wheeled vehicle, this is gonna be kicking up debris into the bottom of the board. So this, pretend, uh, this provides full coverage for the front and to the back and to the sides. Okay, and I'll turn this so you can get a better look of how that looks there. Okay. Okay, the second reason I got this was the design. So if you look at the terminal ends of this plate, it's kind of angled slightly up. So if this was to dig into the ground on a potential nosedive, you have that lip to kind of ride it out, hopefully, or to at least give you a few seconds to react and adjust your weight so you don't take a nosedive. And this also is angled up on the other side as well. It looks like there are, there are some adhesives here. So once we remove our screws here and we set this down, I'll probably go ahead and do I peel this or is this just a grip? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I'm supposed to peel a protective backing on this, but there is a labeling on this. So I'm assuming that this is a silicone grip that you remove the protective film off of. So we'll get to that later in a bit. And this material, it feels like, um, I forgot the name of that. It's U something. It's a synthetic material that's supposed to be relatively slick, but also relatively durable. UGHW or, or something like that. Okay. And then I also bought this just because it provides you with a front handle. So one of the complaints um, that pint owners have had is they want that front handle for the, uh, the pint. And so typically, you know, some riders, what they'll do is when they dismount the board, so we'll flip this board right side up. 
when they dismount the board, they want to be able to grab it from the bottom here. And so this provides a little cutout to give you a little purchase for your fingernails to, or your fingertips to grab onto that um, front part and, and then lift up the board. Okay. So um, to get started, what we're going to do is uh, start with the front. So the front is always the part that's tipping upwards because the battery is the heavier part tipping downwards. So we're going to use a T20 to remove these four bolts right here. Now I'm not going to use the tool from uh, float because it's going to be quicker for me to use my own. So let's So that looks like the short bolts are going to be towards the tire. pretty good so those four for now okay and these look like I just need to tip the board up to get these off so one there that's a long And we got a long one there as well. Okay, so we've taken off four in the front. Now we have these two in the back, which are towards the very back of the, uh, the board. And these are probably going to be long fasteners. forward as well. Yep, we got a long. Okay, and one more long there as well. Okay, and then what you're going to do is there's nothing really to pull off because we're not changing the uh, plates on the one wheel. We're just adding protection. So set your separate shorter gear to the side or hardware to the side, and then we'll go ahead and put this on. And really, there's only one way to put this because there's four holes here and two holes here. So you know this can only go in one orientation. Okay. All right. Now for me, I've already added a little bit of Loctite to the bolts from, um, from float. So I would recommend you do the same, uh, you know, with the Loctite, you just apply a very small film and that's just going to prevent the screw from coming loose or coming completely undone with the normal vibrations that come with your right, especially these screws being on the bottom, they can be hard to notice until it's too late. So we'll put in Remember that these are all, the long screws are all the same size, I'm sure. Yeah, so the long screws from float, they're all the same length. So I can choose any long one and put that here in the side. And, and one over here as well. And for me, I just like to hand tighten these first. Okay. We remember our two short screws are going to be towards the wheel, so we're going to put two long at the ends here. Okay. Let's 
just my alarm for cooking. And then we have our two short screws that are gonna go here to the end. And again, for the short ones, also put some Loctite just for added safety. Okay, so now that these are in the right position, I can go ahead and screw these in. And I like to just keep these loose for now in case I have to make some adjustments with the plate later. slide this back and forth just to make sure that none of these heads of the fasteners are kind of going forward or backward that they're nice and perpendicular to the board so that looks good I'll go ahead and tighten these down them too tight of course you don't want to strip the screw you know one rule of thumb um, when I was uh, I'm a physician assistant student so I did a surgery rotation and um, it, or I did an orthopedic rotation and so you know one of the ways because they don't really have um, torque wrenches sometimes they do but the sometimes what the surgeon will do is like they'll hand tighten these regularly but right when they get to that last part where it looks tight, they take some of the fingers off of the screw, screwdriver and just do it by two fingers. So that way you don't have as much force turning the screw. So here, like I'm using my full palm and then as it's getting tighter, that last part, I'll just use two fingers to do a half turn. And that way you don't, you have less of a risk of stripping that screw. That's pretty much it, so I'll take this down and show you guys what it looks like. So that's pretty great, it has some nice coverage there. Coverage here on the side of the rails. I also like the attention to detail. They put the uh, molding to go all the way in to kind of block that hub area. And then you have that right there. Let's take a look how it does with picking it up from the front handle. So my one wheel is now fully charged. I can actually remove that. That was my first charge actually on my one wheel. So I was being a little extra cautious and I didn't want to remove the charger during the installation of this. So that's gonna be the front of the board, obviously. Let's get a better angle for you guys here. Yeah, there we go. And then you just reach in the front to pull up. Yeah, that's pretty great. I don't know if you guys can see that on camera. That works pretty well. So reaching for the front, pull it up. I can carry it like this, or I can just bring this to the mag handle and carry it like that. And uh, this is how it looks from the side with my slate colored a pint. So I thought that was a nice contrast. I don't know. You know me in measurements. Should I get a measurement on this? See how, see how long this is? I don't have my millimeter ruler with me, but to show you how thick this is for now. Actually, I'll pause this right here. I'll get my proper ruler. Alright, so the float solo plate here is about just over five millimeters. It looks like it about six millimeters thick. Six millimeters. So that's some nice protection to give your your one wheel there. 
All right, so that'll cover it for this video. Um, thanks for sticking with it. Next thing I'm going to be doing is putting the, uh, what do you call that, the sidekicks here on, the, on that part. And then I'm also going to be talking about some of the, uh, the protective tapes I bought because I, wanna, I bought a clear tape to kind of protect the top portion right here as well. All right, so I'll check back with you guys.